The Sandy and Todd Cast is a Mind Garden Media podcast in association with Screw You Todd Productions. We're getting close to the end of the season. This is season two, episode 15, and it's the Sandy and Todd cast. Coming up today, who do we have on, Sandy? We are going to catch up with Victoria Todd, one of our amazing intuitive readers on the Sandy and Todd cast. And she's going to fill us in on what she's been up to and what's going on in the woo-woo world. Our intuitive readers and all that, our our family of those people are just so different. Each one has their own personality. And Victoria brings a lot of energy to everything we do. So stand by. Season 2, Episode 15, Catching Up with Victoria, is on the way next on the Sandy and Todd cast. Feeling a bit lost? Not sure what's holding you back? A transformational tarot session with Eclectic Path Wellness can provide the guidance you need. Combining tarot and coaching to help you understand and navigate the changes you may face. Heal, empower, and clarify your path. Connect with us on Facebook at Eclectic Path Wellness. Broadcasting from two very different yet magical places not found on any map. Get ready to discuss the strange, weird, ghostly, crazy, spooky, and odd things that take place around us each and every day. All while having a little bit of fun. This is the Sandy and Todd Cast. Second to last episode of this season, The Sandy and Todd Cast. Well, I think it's safe to say, Todd, that we made it past the hump. We are now in a good did place. We? we did. I kind of feel like I kind of feel like we made it over the hump, and now there's another hump that's even bigger. <laughs> well, wait until season three. I think it is going to be a lot bigger. I'm so excited about season three. But I will say I missed you because last week we did a best of season one, which was amazing. And had some of our fun, funniest moments. We are pretty funny, I have to say. We are pretty funny. And just listening to them because I haven't heard them in a while. And uh, I was actually laughing out loud. I'm not kidding. Well, I, I had a chance to listen to it, to it, and two things happened. Either one, I went, oh, I remember that. Or number two, I don't remember that. So <laughs> I know. Because we talked about so many different things. It was, and that's why I was just laughing because there were so many funny things that we talked about. The only thing I didn't bring up was the Jesus, but we may have to, in a future best of episode, rebirth the Jesus again. We can, we can definitely consider that. Definitely. I I, I have no problem with that at all. Uh, Obviously on this week, we're going to go back to a time when we spoke with Victoria just recently and, uh, and get some inside information on her. I've got something I want to talk about, but prior to the podcast right now, we were catching up because we haven't had a lot of time together in the last week. And so it was, did I tell you this? Did I tell you that? Did I tell you this? And then you said, did I tell you about my ankles? And I said, <laughs> well, no, so you didn't. Stupid. This, but this <laughs> is so Sandy. This is so you. This is exactly how you live your life. And this is exactly what I would expect to happen to you. So why, why don't you tell the story? <laughs> All right. So I was out in the backyard with my dog, Spike. Everybody knows Spike. And Dave. Everybody knows Dave. And we have, we recently, we used to have kayaks that we would use all the time. But the past couple of years, especially with the pandemic last summer, we didn't really get to use our kayaks much. And our dog, Jack, who passed away May of 2020, was very calm and he would he was great in the kayaks. He would just sit there with his little life jacket on, enjoy the sunshine and have a great time. Well, Spike is nothing like that. Spike at nine years old is like a puppy. There's no way that Spike would sit in a kayak for more than three seconds and then jump over the edge and it would just be a nightmare. So we've decided that we were going to sell our kayaks. We had two hard side kayaks. We did that. But then we also had three inflatable kayaks One was a double seater and then two single seaters that were amazing. They were great. They were just like regular hard sided kayaks. But we just said, all right, let's give them to somebody who can use them Two, of excuse me. Two of them didn't work. The third one was still good. So we were blowing it up. Well, Dave was blowing it up, and I was standing. I was in the just going to say, there's no way you were blowing no, it up. Dave was, was blowing it up. No, there's a there's actually a pump thing, like an actual pump. So he was blowing it up, but I was standing there with Spike, and Spike wanted to play with the ball, 
And so I put him on his 50 foot lead line and I threw the ball and not realizing that the lead line was wrapped around me. So when Spike took off at 100 miles an hour, I got the worst rope burns around my ankles that you can imagine. And oh my gosh, not only was it really sore and painful and it still kind of is, but now they're starting to heal so they itch. And I told, what did I tell you? I said, it looks like I had extremely rough sex. Demon sex. Demon it was a not more demon sex. Demon sex. Shout out to Damon Jacobs on that one because he loves that. Um, can I, I, is there a way that you could show me what your ankles look like right now? Can you lift your ankle over your head Do you or something? you want to see it? Kind of. Um, I can't, I can't lift. What are you talking I mean, about? I mean, I realize this is an audio cast and nobody know, can see this, but I want to see it. I don't so, know. So just a little wait. bit further. You're close. Wait. I don't think if you get, ooh. I don't think, I don't yeah, know. I I'll send see. you pictures. I'll send you pictures. Post it it's on the awful. Facebook page. But it was awful because, it was awful because, like, I don't want to wear, I normally, when I go out, I went out for a little while last night, normally when I go out, I wear, like, jean capris and heels, and I couldn't last night. I had to wear regular jeans and boots because I don't want people to look at my ankles and be like, what is that girl doing? Right. So, yeah, so that's my dilemma right now, is trying to get through all of this itchiness on my ankles. And you now, know me. the you life know me. of Sandy. Yeah, you know me. If there's something to get injured, it's going to happen to me. If there's something the, that she can fuck up, well, I not know. even realize that she's going to fuck it up, she's going to fuck it up. All I wanted to do was play with my dog and make him happy. I mean, I think that's also why, like, like usually when there's tasks to be done around the house, even if it's blowing up a kayak, it's going to be Dave doing it because I think even <laughs> Dave realizes putting that kind of responsibility in your hands is a huge mistake. It's awful. It's awful. I'm just not good at certain things. Like, there's stuff. <laughs> Wait, stop. What are you good at? What are you good at? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. I don't even know. I, but, you know, I, I'm a minus three on technical stuff and, you know, I'm pretty good at this podcast, I guess, but uh, that's about it right now. Audio editing, I can audio edit. And she and wonders why podcasts. I'm nervous when she goes out to ghost investigations. <laughs> Which, you know? by the way, I actually, we're, um, we're recording this the day before this episode comes out and tonight I have a huge investigation at our library so more details on that coming soon but that's tonight so i'm pretty excited about that already getting some visuals and information in my third eye is that how they say it like in the third eye yeah yeah um beforehand so i'm pretty excited for tonight i don't think there's anything negative going on in the library but most likely not and and i i think that's an interesting place to investigate mm -hmm. any library because energy mm -hmm. those books uh hold energy the yep. stories in them probably hold some sort of energy all the people who have taken them out and experienced the books while reading them yep. have probably left a little little of their energy so i you know i don't know what would come through but i just think the energy is there for something to you know grasp onto and use to actually make itself known and two things todd number one we will have unprecedented access to every part of that library, places that the public don't ever get to go in. We will have access to that. And this library has never, ever been investigated before. We Is are, it still open? Is it? Are, do they still use it? Oh, yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's huge. I haven't been in there since I was young, probably teenager, early 20s, maybe. The actual building itself around the early beginning of the 1900s, that location was actually built. But the library was born in, I believe, 1825 and saw several different locations throughout the years. So it's going to be very, very cool and very interesting. I can't wait. Last weekend, the, uh, the group that I investigate with actually had a little get together in Door County, Wisconsin, a live event for fans to go to and actually investigate. And I was not able to go because um, of my health and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I was I was disappointed with that. But my sister went. 
Mm. And she was at one of the investigations, and I don't think there's any, um, you know, I don't think I have to keep my trap shut on any of this, but apparently some spirits came through asking where I was. (laughs) You know, I do believe, I do believe that, I mean, that's cool. I kind of do believe that. I, they know who you I mean the intelligent ones know who you are I do think that you you really left an imprint your whole season one of haunted state was in Door County correct right and this location was one of the locations we were at yeah. for the TV show and I guess what happened was you know they were using a spirit box and my name came through and um, Michael Brown on the TV show producer director star says, there's no Todd with us here tonight. And my sister was at that particular uh, place in, in time. And she said, well, I'm, I'm Todd's sister. And, he, you know, so that was kind of interesting why they were asking for me or whatever. I think that's that really cool. I, I do. Stuff like that really, um, really fascinates me and shows me how, really shows the difference between a residual and a, and a truly uh, intelligent haunting. Yeah, I think there's, I, th- you know, and I had an interesting conversation with someone last night. Um, he had reached out from the UK and he wanted to know a little bit more about my philosophy on energy and all that kind of stuff. And we had an interesting conversation about if residual is just energy doing its thing, uh, replaying over and over and over. And maybe there is another existence of the same plane someplace else. Mm-hmm. And and you're actually not communicating with energy, but you're actually communicating with another person mm-hmm. who is there. And that's the intelligent quote unquote haunting. I mean, there's so many things we don't know and 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 so many things that we need to kind of process. I mean, that yeah. what his explanation of it to me, and I'd never met this guy before, we just started talking ghosts, um, was great. You know, I've I've seen an episode of Ghost Hunters years ago. Uh, it was in the original cast, and they went to some place, and there was a, a bedroom of a princess, and she had a name, Princess Evelyn or something. I don't know. At any rate, they're like, "Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Evelyn? Can you see us?" They didn't hear it at that point, but when they play back the audio, you hear her saying, "Of course I hear you. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. Are you here with us? Of course I'm here. Where are you? So now here's the thing." Was that a ghost of her talking to them or was she actually living in that existence in a different time continuum or something like that? Right. And they were actually having a conversation. That's what that's the kind of stuff that makes you go. Are we talking ghosts here? Are we just talking other exists, uh, other existences on the same plane, but maybe in a different time frame? We can only hypothesize about. I'm proud of you for using that word. Thank you. That was a five dollar word. We can only... Is that like a $5 foot long? <laughs> now, don't make me hungry. I am hungry. No, we can only hypothesize about what really is going on. It's very difficult. We have our scientific instruments, but how much can we really know? There's so much out there. There's a lot of theories on parallel universes and what happens, the space-time continuum... I've listened to most of them. Wormholes, the whole nine yards. I I don't know. But isn't that what makes it so fascinating and so just, I I always want to know more. I want to know more. And I think that's probably why I've lost a little interest in the whole ghost uh, investigating thing a little bit, only because so many people's minds are closed about what we're actually dealing with. They don't want to talk about mediumship. They don't want to talk about empath. They don't want to talk about because that's not what we've been fed over the years with with these TV shows and stuff. So um, just kind of an interesting thought. It's funny because I grew up being sort of, I guess you could say sort of reluctant about mediumship and psychic abilities Um, just because I think what I was taught, what I saw around me, so many people doubting it. And then lo and behold, I realize as an adult later in life that that's me to some, you know, that's me. And it really kind of changed everything 
that I grew up kind of feeling and thinking. And now I'm not so sure that it's right. I, I just don't feel like it's right to teach your children that these things are not right. possible. You know? Yeah. It's uh it's an interesting thought process when you yeah. look at all of that. Yeah. I, I want to mention one real quick thing. While you were out last night with the girls, I sent you a video. Did you get it? Yes, I got it. I just didn't watch it yet. You haven't watched it yet? No. How long is it anyway? It's like, I don't know, like 20 seconds. Oh, <laughs> So, it was like an no, hour long. So, I said, what are you doing? You said watching that video. I thought it was a show. No. So I want you to pull up your phone right now. <laughs> All right. Hang on. And just know when you edit this this podcast, you're probably going to have to bleep something. Okay. But you have to see this because this will lead into what I wanted to talk about briefly okay. on, on the podcast today. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We had a whole conversation earlier, so I got to yeah, scroll yeah, you up gotta a bit. got to scroll up a little bit. All right. So right. there's there's a there's a full video and then I sent you a video I made. That's the one I want you to look at. Oh, Did you look I didn't at get that? that video. I didn't get that video. You I didn't just get got that. no. I just got the one about the Exorcist. Okay, well I sent you a video, um, and I'm going to send it to you again. Okay, I'm already laughing because I have no right. idea what you're doing. Oh, here it is. Okay. 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 So play that by the microphone if you can. What are you seeing? Um, what's, um, oh Reagan. my God, Reagan. Do you know yeah. what she did? Your daughter. So that's what I was watching oh last my night. God. The, uh, the video I was watching is the fear of God, the making of the exorcist. Yeah. Now this, I will tell you right now, this just happened. I was, I was watching other stuff and all of a sudden. In the playlist, when you're watching like YouTube and stuff, stuff yeah. will come up, and all of a sudden there's this video of some of the makeup trials that they that they had with Reagan, the, the little girl in right. The Exorcist, and and so that's when I sent that to you. I did a close up of her face while they were showing the you know the the screen test, and I said that. But then the actual video kicked in for the making of The Exorcist, and I will tell you, that is an interesting. Video. That's an interesting video. It's about I don't know, maybe an hour long or yeah, something. It's not that thought, long. That's what I thought you were sending me, but I got to. I have to watch that. It's really, really good. So William uh, Friedkin was the director of this film, and he went to great lengths to do all the things that you see in that movie. Nineteen seventy three, this thing came out, and there's a lot of prop people that are still alive. There's a lot of art people who are still alive. The, a lot of the actors are still alive. So you hear a little bit from each one of them. Mm -hmm. Ellen Burstein, who played the mother character, right. not a big fan of the director because he made her do some really awful stuff in order to get what he really wanted out of the actors. Mm -hmm. And there's there's a scene where um, she's in the room with Reagan and Reagan slaps her. And she falls to the ground, right? Right. Well, they the stunt that they did, Ellen had to, she had a wire around her waist, and the the props people would pull her really hard to hit the wall. <gasps> and so they did a trial take, and they pulled, and Ellen said, "That's too hard. Don't ever do it again." And mm -hmm. the director said, "Okay, we'll we'll take it slow this time." So she turned around, and the director looked at the guy and said, "Hit it harder." <gasps> So she got, and that's what you see. You see her actually in the movie. She flies back and she grabs her back because it hurt her so bad. That's what made it into the film. Wow. The, the, great, uh, the great part of the movie where um, Reagan pukes on the priest, mm -hmm. on Father Karras, right? Yeah. That's an outtake. The puke wasn't supposed to hit him in the face. It was supposed to hit him in the chest. Um, but it did, and they ended up using that because it was the most actual reaction they could get from him like the actor who played that part was pissed off about it um but all these little stories about what this director did to get the the breath in those in those in those they shot for 60 days in that cold room oh i can't even imagine that at zero oh. degree temperatures so that they could get the breath Oh um, the stuff they did it's amazing and all the actors talk about it some of the actors were very unhappy with the way they were treated mm -hmm. in the film. I can imagine. But the other thing is during, I think it was like a fifth, it took them 15 months to film this. And even the studio was like, when the hell are you guys going to wrap up? 
um, because they had to create all these different nuances. And, and don't forget, um, this was the early 1970s. Well, that's what he said. You know, he said, well, we could have, we could have today, we could draw in the breath, but we couldn't do it back then. Right. So we had, we had to create this room with free refrigeration units. He said, as soon as we turn on the lights, things would warm up. So we could only film for about 20 or 30 minutes before the breath wasn't there anymore. Oh and we'd have to shut down for the day. Wow. So, I mean, it's just very interesting, but I, I a lot of people associated with that movie during that time period died during the filming of that movie. And one of the things I'll find interesting, and I don't want to give a lot away about it. I want people to go out and look for this on YouTube. It's very, very good. I'll actually put it on our Facebook page, the Sandy Excellent. and Podcast, and I'll put it in our group, Stay Weirdos. The Fear of God, The Making of the Exorcist. Uh, the the gentleman who played Father Karras, um, there was an actual priest who is part of the cast. He's the one who... Uh, does the last rites uh, with the guy who falls down the stairs in the beginning of the movie. Um, he went up to Father Karras, the actor, and said, and he gave him a little medallion. And he said, I'm, I'm giving this to you. Do you, know, do you know what it's for? And the, the actor said, no, I don't. He said, whenever you try to show the truth about Satan, the devil, he will come for you. Uh. He does not want the truth to be said. So you need to carry this on your body all the time. So it's very, very interesting. And the things they had to do to fall down all those flights of stairs. I mean, somebody actually did. And all. it's just amazing what they did to get that movie out. And then wow. you look at the movie and you're like, this is a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch that. Now, uh, this, uh, this audio cast episode will be out on Sunday, the 8th of August, which is where it will be tomorrow. Right. For us. And i am got a little extra time tomorrow. I think I'm going to watch it. You got to. Yeah. And, and again, it just makes you realize what a great movie it was. Um, the guy who wrote the book, uh, William Peter, I think it's Blatty or Blatty. I can't really I see my eyes. Blatty. Yeah. Blatty, you're right. Um, he actually wrote the screenplay. And when he went to the director, William Friedkin, William said, we're not doing this. Mm. He goes, we're doing the book. And so William and, and, and William, the two of them, got together and they took passages of the book and said, we're going to film this and we're going to film this and we're going to film that. Jeez. Um, so it was, it was just, it was an incredible look into it and all Ooh. these actors who just were not very happy about the way things happened, but it had to happen that way to get the actual feel for what was going on. Amazing. I don't think people realize how much actors and actresses go through sometimes. Sometimes. Movies. And and against their will. Yeah. And 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 again, the the guy who wrote the book, you know, he's the one who said, "I want to write the story." He had been a comedy writer all his life, so this <laughs> wow. is the first this is the first actual story he did in this kind of genre. And he said, "I want to write the story about what happened back in the 1950s about that little boy right. and the exorcism and all that." And he's the one who then did the study on it and all that. It took him a year. Before they even started writing the book, just to research that whole story out and stuff. So I don't know. It's just amazing. That's great. Just, That's yeah. fantastic. Really cool. I'm going to watch it. I hope everybody else does Good. too. <laughs> but even better, watch that little video I sent beforehand yeah. where he says, where she says, <laughs> do you know what she did? Your blanking daughter. Your blanking daughter. I hear that in my nightmares. Thanks, Todd. All right. Let's talk to Victoria. It's time to do it. Uh, season 2, Episode 15, Catching Up with Victoria on the Sandy and Todd cast. Uh, all right. We got to bring her out here. We love her very much. Uh, I do call her the Texas Tornado. And I and that's said, <laughs> she loves it, that though. is she said with it. all the love in the world. Yes. Please welcome tonight on Tarot Tuesday, Victoria, Mystic Karma by Yay! Victoria. Hi, guys. How are we doing? Hello. We are good. I don't know. We I don't know if good. you saw this, but Lisa actually said hello, lovies, earlier, and I, I think that was kind of a tip to you. Oh my God! There's my boo right there. That's it. so cute. Love it. You finally got to meet Lisa, huh? I did. I did, and her husband, as a matter of fact, came in. That's for right. Reading, uh, with me after Lisa and I um, had our reading for Wine and Read, um, and they're such beautiful souls. Um, and you know, that's the thing was, was being in her energy. There was so much going on. 
Um, and then meeting her husband, man, he was, he was like such a beautiful energy. And I'm just like, man, you got to stay away from the shitty shit, boo. You got to start cutting some ties. Yeah. Um, and then I found out he was a police officer and I was like, shut the front door, get out of here. That is exactly it. It's about show me the facts kind of energy. And I just, I loved it so much. He's, He's so perfect for her. Their energy just really, really was in sync. Well, I, I had dinner with them um, sometime over the weekend, I think. And he brought it up and he was just very, very impressed with the time he spent with you. And, you know, yeah. it's one of those things. And you've seen this before where, where you, you know, re-read cards for them or whatever it is that you do. And they're like, well, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. And all of a sudden yeah. they're like, bam, yeah. and it hits them mm -hmm. and they realize what's yeah. going on. Then it's like, well, the, all that makes sense. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, you know, and, and, and that's the thing. That's why I don't want to know anything. That's why I don't want um, them to come in and start chatting me up. And then because then you're, you're breaking my energy and then I'm not bringing in your ancestors. I'm not allowing myself to listen to my own intuition and really feel, but that's exactly why I would rather them save anything that they have until the very end. Um, of the reading because then I can answer whatever it is because by then I've already put my boundary back up. I can tell spirit, you know, I'm done. I'm good. I'm putting the block in and shutting the door. Um, now I'm going to focus on giving them the answers that they need or helping them through. But usually when they get home, that's why I'm always saying sit on this energy, sit on it. Because it may not happen right this very second, but let me tell you what, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, all of a sudden it's just going to hit you like a ton of bricks. It's going to be that puzzle piece and you're going to be like, shit, now I know what she was saying. And that's why I'd rather have people uh, fully giving me their attention instead of butting at me. Oh, no, that's not because that is the one thing that will drive me crazy because I'm like, you came here for me. You came here to hear what I had to say. You came here. You're paying me to tell you what the fuck is up. And if you don't want to listen, um, then I can't help you because then you're shutting down everything that I'm trying to, to push into your energy to help you to awaken in your crown in your third. Yeah. Can I, do you mind if people like roll tape and record the session with you just so that they can remember everything that goes on? Is that a problem for you? No. In fact, I, I encourage it. I have a, um, a lot of people that come in, um, for me, um, hello, beautiful. Um, I have a lot of people that do come in and they've been with me, um, since I've started over two years ago. And, um, that is a way for them to go back and listen because remember when we are live and we're doing things and we're saying things out, I may not always pick up on the energy right away because when spirit rolls through me, I start talking fast, this and this and this and this, because I want to get all the information. And so that's a good way for them to be able to go back and listen because then they're able to pick up on that. Maybe something that they had tuned out as I was, shoving all this information at them. But yeah, I really highly recommend um, that people video, um, either video record or just hit the recorder um, that way when they leave, because usually my readings are anywhere from 35 to an hour. It depends on how much <laughs> energy spirits got flowing um, and what they want them to know. Right. And so I only tell them what they need to know in order to move this energy forward so they can really start to click and put these puzzle pieces in. Um, but really being able to sit down on your own time right before you manifest or right before you put yourself in meditation and then listen to the whole thing start to finish is usually something that will help to open your energy as you're starting to go through it again. So, uh, no, I don't mind that at all. In fact, most of the time I really recommend it. Um, so you can pick up everything and not just pieces and parts of what you think, um, right. you know, that, that you get out of that. Right. Because I would imagine as you're sitting there listening to you, you're trying to put the puzzle pieces together and that may not be the best time to do it. Maybe that time is just gathering the information and then going back and trying to put it all together. Correct. It's hard because, right, it's hard because when you're in the middle of it, you're hanging on every word, yeah. but you're not processing it 
the way that you really should. I've had readings over the years where, um, of course, this was before cell phones and things like that, where they'd actually have the old tape, the good old tape player, yes. and they'd press record for you, and they would actually give you a tape yes. to take home and listen to. And I loved it because when you're in that moment and your reader is telling you all of this stuff, it's so hard to process it. And there's so many things that happen to you that you'll you'll go back and read and go, oh, my gosh, after the fact. Yes. At the time, it didn't make sense. Now it makes total sense to me. So it's a great way to Tammy do it. Tammy, ask what you charge for a reading. $33 for a reading, and that's a, either a video read or coming in and seeing me at Awakenings. It's the same all the way around 33 And And they can reach you on your Facebook page, which we put up a couple of times, and we will throughout the night as well. So Yes, yes. Can we talk a little bit about this? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sandy. No, 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 no. I was going to say that. I didn't know how much you charge, Victoria, but that's actually extremely reasonable for a reading. Well, that's very reasonable. It is. And, you know, but see, that's been my whole goal, Sandy, since I started this is, again, I'm self-taught. So all the things that I've been doing and going through, this is, again, part of the biggest mass awakening I've ever been involved in. Um, And so... Healing and grounding and understanding who we are in this lifetime to step into our gifts is so important to me. That's why I make Mystic Karma bags. That's why I go out and 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 um, really promote this energy and deliver the messages. You know, I probably could be charging a lot more, especially for the, the gifts that I have. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. But it pisses me off so much when people are overcharging and then they're like, Oh, you could be, and it could be this sign, but it doesn't have to be. It's probably, you know, and I'm like, that fucks people up. It yeah. Absolutely pisses me off because don't do that because then they're looking for that specific sign. Oh, it's not a fire sign. I, this might not be right. And then you're totally putting yourself on a totally different track that shouldn't be. And right. so I, agree. I am very much, and you know, and here's the thing, I live in such a small community um, that I feel that the readings are reasonable enough that it should be as a, a part of self-growth, just because in order for you to understand my, in order for you to step into your gifts, I want you to come in and get a reading. And then I promote myself with my business card and say, here. Find casts. I have um, all this energy I share on my Facebook showing us how to get through this energy. Mm-hmm. That's a better way um, for me to say, hey, this is this is who I am, right? And this is what I'm charging, but I also do oils. I make candles. I do this. I do that. I do this, right? So making sure that I'm um, for myself using my gifts appropriately, but also not making them feel um, unwelcome or like I don't know what I'm talking about or readings are full of shit because that's the whole right. point of having a reading done is because you are pointing them in the right direction for self-growth. Stick around. We'll be right back. In the meantime, here's something pretty cool to check out. Tarot time. If you're listening to this podcast, the divine messages are definitely for you. Let's combine science and magic, shall we? Root cause analysis, business planning, counseling, and good old-fashioned intuitive tarot readings so we can improve your near future circumstances by addressing your present scenarios. Please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. For more in-depth tarot consultations, please book your readings at positivetarotwisdom.com. Infinite love and blessings for everyone. Now, let's get back to the episode. Two real quick things. There's somebody on here that's trolling and asking people to direct message them. Don't do that. Uh, And then second of all, um, Lisa had a quick question. Like how often is too often to get readings? Great question. Um, Well, I usually recommend, and this has been the cycle that I've been finding for the flow of how my bags are going, the people that are coming in for the readings. Um, After every moon cycle, you're in a totally different vibration, totally different energy, totally different ancestors, guides, whatever coming in. So I would say monthly would be um, after every moon cycle, 
because then you're doing a self check, right? Putting yourself in that self care because then I'm going to know if you're in the right vibration or not. Or if you came in and you've been just fucking around and you want me to keep telling you some more business about yourself, because that's when I'm going to call you out and say, look, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're not listening to your ancestors. You're not doing what needs to be done, but yet you're coming in and you're paying me to do the work for you. So I carry your burdens right. and I don't want to do that. Right. Right. Good point. So um, I want to talk a little bit about like um, grounding, grounding yourself. And yeah. we've talked about, yes. we us three were talking about it before we went on and, and Sandy and I talked a little bit about it, how everybody just seems to be there. There seems to be this weird energy and it's draining and we don't understand what it is exactly. And I mentioned that coming out of the last moon cycle, usually I feel really pumped afterward and very strong and and, and like my manifest, my, my manifesting really did something. And this time it just felt like complete horse crap. And yeah. and so I, can you talk a little bit about grounding and how important it is in our daily lives? Well, here's the thing. It's very important. Um, that should be, again, that is one of the things that I'm very, very adamant when I talk to um, anybody, whether I'm doing live, whether I'm doing readings, whether they just come into awakenings and buy a mystic karma bag. Um, grounding is so important um, because we are releasing a lot of shit. And if you think about it, you're pushing out all this, this energy, right? And that energy is what's going back into the frequencies, into the air. And that is what circulates, right? Because that's, that's everybody's vibration that we pick up on. And so grounding, getting outside and walking barefoot. After a rain, walking, just running outside um, in the rain. A, it's cleansing and healing because it's coming from um, the heavens, right? So it's allowing you to cleanse your body, but doing it barefoot um, is a connection because then if you think about it this way, when you're walking in the grass, right, the earth is then able to pull all this stuff out of your feet, right? And it's like you can feel it from the top of your head just kind of draining all the way down. Going and sitting under a tree, sitting by the water, which is something that I do all the time. Um, because for me, I'm an earth sign. I don't do feels. Thanks, water signs, by the way. What, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> I get sitting, sitting under a tree. Um, I'm actually sitting and I'll sit and my legs are out, right? And then I'm pointing at the water. So for me, when I'm closing my eyes and I'm allowing myself to ground, I'm allowing and feeling this beautiful ray of light just all around my body. And then I'm imagining all the shitty shit of my emotions sinking down into the ground and then shooting out my feet and then heading into the water, which is why I always would like to wear shoes that I can uh, take off quick, like my flip flops or slip ons. And then I'll get up and I'll walk around and then I'll walk by the water and I'll put my toes in the water because then I'm allowing myself to cleanse and heal. But I'm also allowing myself to visually see removing all this energy and dirt, if you will. It's like cleaning a fan or cleaning your windows. You know, after a while, you start to kind of get kicked up. That's that heavy feeling um, that Todd's been talking about that you were talking about, that emotional feeling where the frequencies in the air are so strong right now that when we're outside, we can feel like there, last night, I even just out my window, everybody was fighting up and down Main Street. It was crazy to me. I was standing and just looking out my window going, who gonna fight, who gonna fight? <laughs> it's crazy, it's crazy. <laughs> Do I need to call the cops? What do I, you know? But I was so intent on watching what was going on down Main Street that I was just like, see, this is exactly how I felt that energy coming in. It, everybody's releasing all this shit out into the air. And that's the energy when we walk outside and open our door. That's the energy that we impact start to soak into our body. And that's why we feel tired, exhausted heavy 
sadness, anxiety, guilt, all these things. And you're like, oh, anxiety. What the fuck? Yeah. Like I'm clearing and cleansing and doing all these things and saging. Last night I went through my whole house and I was saging and doing all this stuff. But that is how important grounding is Um, because you're giving all this this energetic and this cosmic and galactic energy that just comes in that's out in the frequencies of everybody else's bullshit because we have to remember for the last three weeks we've been in eight of cups energy eight of cups right walking away from people places and things that no longer serve us can you imagine all those frequencies that everybody is actually purging from their body that impasse like us intuitive sensitives walk outside and then we're, it just totally changes everything about us, which is why we feel, because I said the same thing to Todd. I worked all day. I woke up. I was fine. Took my kids to school. I was went into work. And then all of a sudden before podcasts, I was like, man, I'm fucking tired. I feel like I need a nap. Yeah. Yes. I had this heaviness, this feeling. And I was just like, man, I'm just, okay, let's, what do we got to do? Let's do this and really try to get back into this um, energy of, of clearing this shit out because it is, especially with water signs delivering that tower. We're guaranteed to do, do deep dive emotions, which that's mm-hmm. the frequency that's out in the, right. in the world. So, yeah. Now, Sudi said, she says, I've been burning sage and palo like crazy this week. So have I. Yeah. So have I. And usually I'll do it once a week. Yeah. And I usually feel, you know, fine. The past couple of weeks, I've been doing it almost every day. Yeah. Every day. Now, I have Victoria and I have a question to follow this with, but I have selenite and I have large sticks of selenite in, in a square. Yes. And I will go and I will stand inside of that selenite and you literally can feel it draining from you and you sort of move around a little bit you sort of uh, to ground myself I have been standing in that square that poor square he probably hates me right now because I have been in that square every single day yes for about three weeks now yes and is there is there any other now selenite is a great uh crystal to help draw energy bad energy negative energy heaviness is there anything else that people can use um well i wear my tourmaline i wear this as a necklace i never take my tourmaline off unless i'm jumping in the shower um but i have my selenite um tourmaline there's there's a couple of other good ones that are are um really good for grounding great um energies but um, I find that my selenite and my tourmaline are very good for my energy um, yeah. because that, again, you're, the selenite is coming through, right, and, and taking all this negative energy and purging it, helping you to purge it. And it's yes. also clearing your third eye and crown chakra, which is beautiful yes. energy. Um, but then I'm also, I also couple it with my, my tourmaline. Tourmaline is going to help to keep you grounded when we can't get outside and, and walk on the earth, right? And really ground and nurture our energy. Um, but it also helps to repel, which is why I wear it on my chest. Um, but it's going to do the same thing. It's going to help to purge that energy. Um, So that way it's going to help you to really stay grounded. Um, But I've been finding, I've got tourmaline. I put tourmaline. I've got like 15 of them all over the place, along with my big selenite sticks. I shove them bitches in my pocket. I find (laughs) them. It's terrible. I don't go in touch. Todd kind of Todd kind of smirks at me, but when I say I don't go to any investigation without my black tourmaline necklace, yes. tourmaline in my pockets, yes. black tourmaline in my pockets. Yes. I take selenite with me. Yes. I take anything that I possibly can, and I use it as protection. And it's a wonderful form of protection yes. of dispelling negative energy, keeping it away from you at a safe distance and the grounding capabilities, just amazing. I just want to really get in here real quick and just say, I'm loving the interaction on the podcast tonight. Everybody's reaching out and saying hello and saying hi. And that's really what we're trying to foster here. You guys all know Sudi. She's on tonight. Lisa Hale's on tonight. EJ's on tonight. I mean, we all know one another because we're on here so often. Feel free to reach out, say hi, become friends, all that stuff. That's why we're really here. It's like a family. It's like a really family. I love it. Dysfunctional family. 
a really, really dysfunctional. Uh-huh. Yes. Because there's stories, <laughs> there's stories at Christmas time to tell the ki- grandkids when we get old. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And there's video proof of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, That's right. We're going to do a, a few readings in a little bit. So if you're interested in having Victoria do a card reading for you, uh, you can request one now and then we'll get to them as soon as we can. Um, Sudi just, Sudi <laughs> just said we put the fun in dysfunctional. Yes, we do. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. I love it. I love it. Looking ahead, one of the things you mentioned off, uh, off air was that yeah. coming up this month, at yeah. the end of the month, this yeah. moon cycle is yeah. going to be really important. Can yeah. you touch on that briefly? What are we talking about in this moon cycle? Well, this moon cycle for June, because we've been dealing, that's why we've been healing and purging all this energy. And that's why um, spirits kind of fast tracking us into this, this cleansing and, and clearing, right? Because we have to go into this um, with full heart chakra. Otherwise we're going to keep manifesting these karmic cycles. Yeah but that's why we're learning to break and ground and balance um, because June 23rd, when we manifest, we are all supposed to be coming together as a one to manifest in heart chakra energy. This that we're manifesting, that's why there's no time to stop. We don't have time to stop because every forward movement, every action that we're taking towards our desired manifestations, building our future, building the future timeline, Setting, getting in the heart chakra is going to be an important purging energy from now until the 23rd when we manifest because this is going to last for the next five years. That's just like all the shit that we've been clearing. This all started for us way back in 2000. It's how long this, the, these couples and this soul has been really trying to clear, right? Because we go in 10 year cycles. And so for the next three weeks, we have to continually, we're going to be exhausted. We're going to be tired, but we have to stay on it. We have to keep moving this energy forward because spirit wants to know, are we going to move this in heart chakra energy so we can finally build in heart? Or are we going to stop because we're tired, right? Well, then you're not building and thinking about the future timeline because in the next five years, what we build now, just like mystic karma started from nothing. I've been doing it. It's almost been three years for me now. And so Mm -hmm. there there's that cycle where I'm just like, okay, I can't stop now. I built it to what it is. And if I stop now, it'll fall off. Right. Yeah. Then, then there's no, there's no building my future. So that's why this is the next cycle is the next five year cycle of what it is that we want to build. That's why I'm always saying, fuck it. I'm going to be pissy and I'm going to moan and I'm going to swear about it, but I'm not going to stop. You know, I'm just going to do what I need to do to be in surrender. But that's why it's so important because this is going to take us in the next five years, what it is that we're building for the future timeline. And it's a lot harder for us to think about it now where we're going to be in five years which is why spirits like you have no time to think about it make movement it's not going to be perfect but fucking build it right so for someone like me this is going to be really difficult because if i have a choice of taking a nap or 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 saving myself (laughs) from a fire or stopping myself from falling asleep behind the wheel of a car i will always choose the nap (laughs) because <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's my body. <laughs> that's just how I am. So it's going to be difficult. I said, I said to Todd the other day, I said, Todd, I don't know how much longer this is going to last, but it feels like it's been going on for six years already. Yes. But so you're saying we really only have a few more weeks to do this, yes. to shed this energy, yes. to move it out yes. so that we can move on and we can have good things a good future ahead of us yes because you have to look at it this way if we're equally giving back to the divine because we have empathic gifts because we uh work with spirit whatever it is it was time it was written in the stars that we were at this time going to go through this meet our soul tribe our soul tribes were going to start coming in and then we were all going to be earth air fire and water bringing in spirit so we can manifest right and Mm -hmm. so In order for that to have all taken place, we had to pay our karmic debt. Right? Mine must have been huge. I know, mine too. I'm just saying. I've been saying that too. I was like, (laughs) what did I do? Damn it. 
<laughs> did I not learn the first 15 times? And then I answered my own question because then I'm like, yeah, no, I get it. I'm all, I know, I know. Um, because it's very um, hard for me. I don't like being told what to do. I don't. It pisses me off because then I'm yeah. like, but I don't want to do that. And then after I started learning that every time I would say to spirit, I don't want to do that. They fucking tower my ass. And I'm like, <sighs> so then I started learning uh, how to manifest with the moon cycles. And then that's how the witchy vibe started. And then I was like, oh, shit, I get it. I get it. You'll give me what I want if I do what you want. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I got it. I'll be in surrender. I'm going to stop fighting with you. But then it was just like, then here's a plate of shit. Here's a plate of shit. Here's a plate of shit. And I'm just like, what? okay. And I cried about it. And then we just started moving on. Yep. <laughs> like, fuck it. it. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. And you have to that's, remember that. That's a good motto. It is what it is. You can yeah. find uh, Victoria on her Facebook page. Search for Mystic Karma Oils. And that will get oh. you there. Victoria, before we do readings, I have one quick question. Now you talk about your um, your bags that you sell in the store. Do you mail those? I do, do you send those to people? I do. I will ship them. Um, I've got people all over the place. Ireland um, that I ship to. Texas I ship to. Um, Kentucky I ship to. Kansas I ship to. Illinois I'll ship to. Yeah, so all over the place. How about New York? How about New York? I would ship it to New York. You gotcha. <laughs> now, how how would somebody, would they get in touch with you through your Mystic Karma page in order to have you send something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they would just they would just go on and then message me um, and then let me know that they want a Mystic Karma bag. That's why I always post what I'm, I'm doing for the month. Um, and Beautiful. I try to start doing it like July's bags I'll do in the middle of, of June here because I've already been working with spirit understand where we should be as a collective for that vibration right. and what we're going to need which is why uh yes washington as well <clears throat> wherever you are boobies, just know i'm gonna get it to you so um that's I'm, why- I'm excited i don't know why i didn't think of that before there is a mail I've system. I've told her that before. But you I didn't know, even think about it. I don't listen to you I know you don't. Usually. I know you don't. I know. At some point, you'll learn that I'm always right, and the information that flows from <laughs> my always. mouth is always no. the correct stuff. No, so. that's not the case. Ugh. Anyways. But yes, I will. Awesome. I will ship it. Beautiful. Um, but that is why I make a lot of my product, um, because then I can incorporate the stones that you need for the grounding energies or to help us manifest, or, uh, you know, I have people that, make earrings for me, whatever it is. It's all about self-care, growth, grounding, nurturing, right? And so that's right. why I do what I do, making the soap that I work with hemp. So I make uh, soaps with hemp in it, um, you know, and, and, and it's so important for me to be able, because we get so busy. We're so busy all the time that we forget to get back to ourselves, and we are such a priority and we have to start learning to make ourselves a priority no matter what and that is the most important journey that we're on especially with the gifts that we have with being empathic it's about grounding this energy learning how to equally give and receive bringing in your soul tribe making sure that you're able to sage. If you can't sage, I make candles to manifest with. My candles do three things. I want them to heal us and smell good. I want them for meditation and I need them for protection. So we add all these different things in order to make sure that one candle is giving us everything that we need because that's what I need when I'm manifesting. I can't light all these different candles. I'm like, fuck that. I just want one candle that's going to do everything that we that we need. If we're working on heart chakra, I want it to be about love. I want it to be about opening. If we're learning to ground and meditate, then I put grounding um, manifesting magic powder we use. I love it. My candle smells so good. Oh. Um, but that's exactly why we do what we do, right? Um, working with different healers, every one of us are a different type of healer. And I have found that when I am able to work with other people and I just say, hey, here's my intentions, I need this. Come to me with what you have, then I'll display it in my bag, bring me a business card, 
because that's going to go in there so they can then go on your Facebook page and then we're getting your name out. I'm essentially helping everybody build a fucking business from nothing. Just yeah. advertising, yeah. word of mouth, just sharing, right? And then you'll keep coming back because if you want these healers, then you'll keep coming back for Mystic Karma to see sure. what we have. You know, we started right. with these magic wands. I love the magic wand. Those are absolutely odd. See? I know. I'm so jealous. Yeah. Lisa's got one. They're beautiful. Too. His sister. That's great. One. I love it. Lisa says Todd is always right, even if he isn't. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. You have to just agree to, to just let him be about we just business. Right. We just let him think what he wants. That's so. correct. We love you. I love you guys. Big, big love. And that's exactly what having um, a soul tribe is. And that's why you just got to keep doing what you do, moving this energy forward. It is heavy. It is a lot of work. But you got to remember, we are building for the next five to 10 years, and we can't be sitting on our ass um, expecting that the work is going to get done if we're not putting the time into it. Love it. I mean, what can you say? That is who Victoria is, <laughs> and we her. love her for it. Oh, I love her. I love her. Snip, Victoria. snip, snip out the shitty stuff. You yep. know? <laughs> She's amazing. She's amazing. You can um, find all of her contact information, her social media, in the show notes of this episode so that you can con- contact her and find out a little bit more about her. Very, Mystic very Karma cool by Victoria is her Facebook page if you just want to look up that really quick. But yeah, check out the notes. And she does a daily or every other day podcast. Uh, she calls it Daily Vibes. And mm-hmm. what she does is she just really dives into each of the sun, not the signs themselves, but water signs, air signs, fire signs, earth signs. She kind of gives you an idea of what the day holds and what we all have to do collectively to get through life together. And so she's I always think it's spot on. We, we listen to it and we kind of follow the things that she says pretty spot on. You know, it's one of those things where you're like, and I've said this before, but I used to have time every morning where I would take a break. As soon as it would come out, I'd take a break and listen to it for 30 minutes. Um, and I don't always get to do that now, but I'll listen to it on the way home and I'll be like, well, that's why today happened this right. way. or That's why that right. happened. Or that's why this conversation happened with that person, you know? Yep. So it's very interesting. Yeah, definitely. So big thank you to Victoria for joining us on our journey, along with all of our amazing intuitive readers, Eric, who will be a guest next week, uh, along with Sudi and Aaron. Well, and, I'm excited about that. Yeah, me too. And again, season three coming this season in between season two and season three, we're going to have a couple of bonus episodes for everybody. So we won't take a couple weeks off per se. We'll be bringing you some great content all the way through. I love it. And uh, keep an eye open. Uh, I, we've had, haven't had a lot of time to work on it, but we're still trying to put together a little packages per month for some of our our members of the group. We'll get to that at some point when things calm down and our lives yeah. make sense. We'll get to it. Um, but we'd definitely like to k- kick that off in the next 30 to 60 days. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah, and, keep um, and if you have any ideas of people you want us to talk to on the podcast, let us know. We'd always love to uh, to check people out and possibly have them as a guest. So It's a great community, and everybody knows somebody who might really want to share their story. Yes. Just never had an opportunity to. So think about it and get somebody who really wants to share their story with us and have them contact us. I love it. Until next time, I guess you and I should say bye. Bye. How long it takes, I don't know. 